Sorry, I was just praying because this is going to be difficult. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you viewers, I've just looked at their team properly. Oh my god. We'll start off with FM20's favourite striker, Erling Haaland. 98 rated on my scout report, as you would imagine. Look at this. He's already got 17 goals this season. He's, that's not prolific by any means, but you look at his average rating of 7.59. Scary. They've got a 34-year-old Mo Salah, who's still pretty good as well. Bernardo Silva, who notoriously always scores against me in FM. Latoro Martinez... Tadebo, that defender I wanted, Pina. I'm not going to Alfonso Davies, Bruno Gamara, who's obviously played for us. Kakare, they got Sander Berg, Ronaldo Vieira, Kingsley Coman, Tiskankov, Eden Militao, Marcus Rashford, Odjo Zola, Tanguy and Dombele. I'm scared. I'm scared. The one player who might not be brilliant is their goalkeeper, fortunately. But that is what we are faced with as we take on Real Madrid at home today. In terms of fixtures that have gone by since the last time we met, which is the 6-0 pumping of Zenit, we drew 0-0 away at Ewood Park, which is a bit disappointing, but then bounced back and got a 2-0 win against Middlesbrough. We've done well in terms of keeping clean sheets. We'll do well to keep one today, that's for sure. The other issue I've got is that both my left wingers are injured at the moment in terms of Dorame and Vinicius Jr. So at the moment, Omar Molina is having to play out as an inverted winger out on that left-hand side. I'm not feeling massively confident, I'm not going to lie, but Cornea has returned to lineup, so that's something. After this, we've also got a game against Everton as we look to chase down a Champions League place in the league, and we'll get onto that after this. At the moment, this is all my undivided attention. So, the team starting today is Wint in goal, and you've got Dijers, Pavlovich, Van Dijk, and Collins. Van Dijk is playing so well at the moment, it's hard for me to bring Petters and Thiago back in, considering his form wasn't as good, but Van Dijk's been brilliant since he came in, imperious, some would say. Declan Rice and Adilio, obviously always in the middle. Then Molina, like I said, on the left. Nomoko uh, has come back into the midfield. And then you've got Conero out on the right. And, um, yeah, Leonardo Kuchins up front. So, expect no goals from him today. Although he did actually score against Middlesbrough. Ah, here we go then. So, they've got Augusto Sanchez. They've got Sergio Deste. Didn't realise that. They've got Jewel Kunde at the back, who looks... Yeah, he looks pretty good. They've got Tadebo, Edin Militao, Ronaldo Vieira, Kakare, Sander Berg... Marcus Rashford, Bernardo Silva, and Martinez. I mean, Haaland's not playing. Neither's Salah, neither's Bruno Gamares, neither's Mortolara, neither's Komen, neither's Pina. So their bench is pretty much as good as my starting lineup. I'm going to set this set. I want you to pick up from where you did last time off. If we were to get anything out of this, then we need to A, keep a clean sheet somehow, and B, take a lead. Take a lead back to Spain. Give me something to work with. The last thing we need is a bad result here at Ellen Road. And we have the first highlight here as Cornet whips the ball in. On oh, the mocha. How have you missed that? He's got to be about four yards out there. Oh, mate. How have you missed that? How have you missed that? Looks like there's going to be another corner here, which obviously is where the first opportunity came from. Cornet whipping the ball in again. Good delivery. Kutra in. Oh. <laughs> He's hit it over the bar. Another corner. Come on, come on, mate. Whip it in. Good ball in. We're winning everything. Virgil van Dijk is scored! He scored! Yes! Get in. The ball ricocheted here, there, and everywhere. But Virgil van Dijk, some question why I signed him. This is why. Big game player. Can't believe it. It's first goal for Leeds. Adido makes stuff happen. But Virgil is there on hand just to tap it in. A brilliant finish. Get in! I doubt we are 1-0 up against Real Madrid. Oh my god, oh my god. Nobody panic. I don't know I'm telling everyone else not to panic. I'm panicking. Well, after that goal, nothing happened. Like, literally nothing. Tottenham are being beaten by PSG, which is something we all like to see. I go passionately say I'm happy with performance so far. Keep it up. Molina and Kutra are the only two players that aren't really playing particularly that well at the moment. But still not bad. A 6.6 is like average. It's not awful. It's not like they're making massive mistakes or anything. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Salah's come on and Kakare has gone off. So they've moved Bernardo Silva back into the midfield to try and obviously get hold of the ball and dominate it a bit more. I'm, I'm debating making a change here. I'm going to make a change. Nomoko is coming off and I'm going to bring on Belico, who's obviously played quite well so far in his career. I'm also going to take off Millie and bring on Vinicius Jr. I know he's slightly injured, but if he can get us that second goal and create a bit of magic, that'd be brilliant. As the Toro Martinez hits it straight at Winst. Thank God that wasn't a proper highlight. 
Half an hour to go. Corner. Corneo whips the ball in. Good header away there, but we've knocked it back in. Rice. Oh, he's given the ball away to Vieira. Now Real Madrid can counter. They don't deserve anything from this. They've literally done nothing. Brilliant tackle there by Dices against Mo Salah. But Eden Militao has literally just ran past him. Get back, mate. Militao whips it in. No. Oh, I hate him. Bernardo Silva out of nowhere. Literally out of nowhere. It's the first highlight they've had. It's the first highlight they've had. Somehow we just let Edda Militao just run past us all. He just dinks the ball to the back post. I hate him. How has he won that header? All that joy evaporated very quickly. That is so upsetting. They've come back a bit more in the second half. We've not really been at the race the second half, but we should have put it to bed in the foot. Here we go. We're playing some nice football. It's just not really ended in anything at the moment. As Rise plays it back to Pavlovich. Pavlovich chips it forward. That's such a poor ball. And Salah's misread it. We've been really poor second half. We've not been able to keep it up at all. Militao to Salah. They're going to score here again. Rashford, it's 2-1. I think he's offside. Thank God for that. But uh, it's second half, we've been atrocious. Three minutes out on time. Corneo whips the ball in. Tadebo heads it clear like he has done pretty much all day. Apart from the first half where we were good. Corneo, ball in. Morelos. Oh, you are joking. Kunde's blocked it. I thought he was going to get a clean shot on goal there. Well, 1-1 one -one is in the end of the world, but you have to say it's advantage Real Madrid going into the second leg. Corneo was man of the match. He was excellent. We didn't do anything near enough in the second half, but overall, they got a much better team than us. We did okay, but that's a bit gutting. It's a bit gutting. And that opens it up then for the second leg. We're still in it. That's the most important thing. It's just the, the away goal and the way they got it as well. They hadn't done anything up until that point. Then the minute they got it, you could tell the confidence started flowing back into their team. And they were very good, but that's gutting, that is. And with regards to the league, then, things are not all rosy in the garden. United have a game in hand on us, and they're still four points clear. So we're going to be struggling to make top four because the nearest player to that player, nearest team to that afterwards is Tottenham on 66. They're eight points clear. So even if we win our game in hand that we have on them, we'll still be five points behind. And we've got a really hard run of fixtures coming up. Like a really hard run of fixtures. This is the make or break month, to be fair. And um, I'm not feeling 100% confident. I think would be my honest assessment of where we are right now. And for some reason, even though we just played on Tuesday, the Premier League thought it'd be good if they put us on a Friday night game on our own against Everton. So thank you to the schedulers. You. And the only change I'm going to make to the lineup is that Dorame is going to come in on that left-hand side for Molina, who didn't play particularly badly, but I... Obviously, it's not his natural position. Dorame is a much more natural player on that side, so we're going to go with that. Otherwise, it is as you were, because I don't really have the ability to rotate too much at the moment. they got some decent players here. Notably, Masengo is a player we previously had. they got still got Andre Gomez, Jared Bowen. they got Rutter out on the right hand side. He's pretty decent, but they're not playing very well at Everton at the moment. They're currently down in 16th position, so this is a game I expect us to win. And I'm going to tell the boys that I expect to win. We need to start picking up mega points or maximum points in the Premier League if we have any chance of maintaining our Champions League status because I can't see us winning the Champions League to stay in it for next year. This is a chance for us to kind of put a little bit of pressure on United, on Tottenham and all the teams above us. Just need to kind of poke away at them a little bit and just make sure they know that we're still here. It's going to be born to the back post. Namoko picks it up now. Namoko tees it back to Durame, Pavlovich. Declan Rice. I mean, this is a decent play from us here. Not the best ball from Rice, but Conair wins it. Kutrin, he's at the bar. He's at the bar. Will we ever see Kutrin score in the Premier League again? I don't actually know. I genuinely don't know. We've got a brilliant record against Everton, to be fair. We've only ever lost them twice, but we've won against them ten times since I became manager here at the club. And as good as that is, it doesn't mean anything if we don't get a goal today and win it. I mean, we just... I, the... the I can't tell if we're having a really good season or we're having a mediocre season because at the start of the season, the kind of aim of the team was to finish like top half and we are doing that comfortably. At the moment, we're pushing for we're pushing for Europe and obviously for a Champions League qualification. I'm pretty sure Europa League is pretty much almost already cemented. It's just in a case of... It feels like we've gone backwards since last year, though. Only in terms of results. In terms of performance, I don't think we're actually that much worse. I think we're actually all better. But I think everyone else has kind of picked up a little bit this year. And that's the annoying thing. As Collins gets on the ball, he's rounded his man. Pick your bloke. Corneo hits it. That's a stupendous finish. I mean, how he got it to go at 90 degrees once it once he hit it is, is unbelievable. I mean, what a football. This guy can bend space and time. I mean, this is genuinely possibly one of the worst shots you've ever seen that still managed to go in. Let's see whereabouts. 
I mean, that is literally going row Z, and he smacked it into someone's... I'm not even sure how the hell they can call it his goal. I have no idea how that's been qualified as Corneo's goal, but I don't care. We're 1-0 up. Yes! Good. Corneo, free kick, whips it in. Pavlovic, no, Musso clears it. And everyone back, please, quickly. Josip Brekolo into Gomez. Gomez back to Masengo. Don't you dare do anything today, mate. Darame, good ball, good header there, lad. Adelio on the ball, hits it long. Into Corneo. Branco Corneo for a second of the game. Was there ever any doubt? Branco Corneo is just so damn good. He's so good. He's one of the few players that when he goes through on goal, I think, goal. And this is a brilliant ball by Adelio, who's had a standout year as well this year. We've got so many wonderful players that we just need a little bit more finesse and we'd be there. Branco Corneo, great finish. 2-0, cruising. Love it. Best thing is we've scored the second most amount of goals in the league at the moment, which if you can imagine previously last year, that was never going to happen. Great interception there by Declan Rice. Rice now on the ball. Hits it into Durame. Durame goes against his man. Durame hits it. It's a bit of a floaty one over the bar. Durame actually got his first goal for the season off the camera. I mean, how the mighty have fallen. But he's playing really well today. Speaking of playing well, I am going to take a Branco Quineo, which he's not going to like, but I need him fit for the game away in Madrid. So he's coming off. Same with the DDO. And Namoko and Zomblet are coming on to replace them. And I'm thinking I might take Tyler Collins off as well. Just polished off my tee there. Pretty sure that milk was out of date. It's going to be delightful going forward. Last chain, Tyler Collins coming off and Andy Harwood's coming on simply because Tyler Collins said that he needed a rest before the game. Uh, and I ignored him because I need him because he's world class. I don't like it when I make changes and suddenly Everton start getting highlights. I mean, what is going on with Andy Harwood there? He's not followed his man at all. Gomez on the ball. Back to Dilla Viboro. He's having a very good game out on that left-hand side. He whips in and... I don't know what I find more disgusting. The fact that Andy Holds just let him put a cross in there, Debora, or the fact that Curtis Jones is playing for Everton. I, I can't I can't bring myself to see it. FM's meant to be the realistic ones in the transfers. Why in the world would Curtis Jones ever go to Everton? And from being very comfortable 2-0, it's suddenly become a little bit tense in these last 10 minutes. It's If we lose, because I've made changes, it just goes to show that you should never make changes when you're winning in FM. Durames has decided not to follow his man. Tierney back to Jared Bowen. Bowen on the ball. What a save by Wince. But for God's sake, seriously. Any win away from home is a good win. But to have been 2-0 up and cruising. And with these stats, should have been a lot more comfortable. But we've done it. Branco Corneo has, again, single-handedly dragged us through again. 2-1. Thank God for Branco. I'm going to pass it say a very nice victory. Well done. Get the, uh, get the morale up. That's good. It's taken us within one point of the top four. Despite the fact we've obviously got... Two games in hand of United. We don't worry about that. It's 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 going to be a very tense end to the season. Obviously, we know what's coming up next. It's the second leg of the game against Real Madrid. But that's obviously for next episode. I just want to see where we stand in the midst of everything. United, Arsenal, Liverpool and Tottenham. All the teams above us have home games today. So I expect them all probably to win those. But I just want to see whereabouts we stand in the race for the Champions League. United won their game. That's annoying. Basically, we're fighting out with Tottenham and United really now for that last Champions League spot. I can't see us overhauling any of them. Arsenal and Liverpool both won as well. And Tottenham v Burnley. I'm guessing Tottenham probably win this as well. So it's it's it was a big thing for us to... Yeah, they just, just won. So it's a big thing for us, obviously, to have got stayed in it because this is a, a week where we could have lost out and lost even more ground on the two teams ahead of us. But we still maintain that we have a game in hand over Tottenham. We're eight points behind. We can make that five. I want to see what their run-in is like, to be fair. Actually, Tottenham's run-in is, is really, really kind. Um, I think the likelihood is that we are not going to make Champions League football. That's my fear. I don't think we are going to make Champions League football unless we win the Champions League, which, as we all know, is going to be very, very difficult. But that's what we're up against, and that is where we are coming back. In the next episode, nothing will happen between now and then. We will be taking on Real Madrid away at the Bernabeu. And at the moment, I'll say it's a one-game episode. If it goes through and we don't need to go through extra time or anything, then we'll also have the Arsenal game afterwards. But for the majority of it, I'm going to say that it's probably going to be a one-game episode because I can see that going to extra time penalties if we play as well as I know that we can. But it's a big month. It's a really, really big month. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Are we going to make Champions League football? Can we get past against Madrid? I wasn't too impressed with them in the first leg, but then they weren't at home. So 
it's a difficult one to say. We will um, we'll find out, I guess, won't we? Thank you so much for watching the episode. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then you know what to do. Please do drop a like on the video. Share, subscribe, go and follow me on Twitch or on Patreon or wherever it is that you can to support the channel. If, obviously, you feel like it, I'm not going to pressure you. And just thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about our Champions League chances. I've got a funny feeling we might do okay, but we won't win it. But we'll see time will tell I guess. But thank you so much for watching. Please do take care of yourselves and of course stay 